revisiting the books that you loved as a teenager can be a fascinating and sometimes a disconcerting experience. It's great fun to go back to books you loved and see if, as a mature reader, you still absolutely love them, or do you look back and think, goodness, what on earth did I see in that book when I was 15 years of age? It's an experience that I have had recently with rereading Anya Seaton's novel, Catherine, a book I adored as a teenager. I read it frequently, and there was one particular scene in this novel that I loved most of all. Young Catherine de Rowett has been married off to a rather country bumpkin of a squire. She is not in love with him. They've had the wedding, and her new husband does not even bother to kiss her. Now, there's another man who's really interested in her. He is John of Gaunt, the great Duke of Lancaster. And when he sees that Catherine has not been kissed as a bride, he says to the young squire, I see I must set you an example. And he sweeps Catherine into his arms and kisses her passionately. He says to her, your lips taste of honey. And I thought that kiss was just the most wonderful thing as a teenager. Many, many years later, 25 years, something like that, I was visiting the magnificent property of Kenilworth, which is where John of Gaunt, and by that time his mistress, Catherine, ended up living for some time. And I saw a copy of this book in the bookshop. I picked it up, and I think that my fingers must have held a subconscious memory of where in the book that kiss was, because I opened the book on the very page that I opened it to, there was the kiss. I was able to read it again and love it once more. So Anya Seaton, the author of this fabulous book, was American. She lived from 1904 to 1990. She made many trips to England as a young child because both of her parents were writers and they traveled there very frequently. And she ended up writing wonderful historical novels. Sometimes she called them biographical novels. And Catherine is a very good example of that because this is a novel about a real woman who did have an affair with John of Gaunt and she became ancestress to some of the kings of England. She was also, fascinatingly, sister-in-law to Geoffrey Chaucer. And I love the bits in the book where Chaucer appears. And his wife, Philippa, is always nagging him because he's bought too many books. I think you know whose side I would be on in that argument. And I suspect you would be on Chaucer's side and not his wife's as well. So it's a wonderful book about a real woman and her influence on English history. But when it was published in 1954, some critics banded it as being obscene and evil because it made adulterous lovers seem like awfully nice people. So it's a wonderful book, one that I thoroughly enjoyed revisiting and loved as a teenager. Anya Seaton also wrote an excellent book called The Winthrop Woman, and this one came out in the year 1958. It's the story of Elizabeth Winthrop, who was the niece to the Puritan governor of Massachusetts, John Winthrop. She sails with her uncle to the Puritan world, and Bess is a very passionate, feisty woman, and she finds it hard to fit into the Puritan ethos and, and way of life. Anya Seaton felt that history had left out too many women. In her view, it was all about men. She wanted to redress the balance. Bess ends up having quite a few husbands in the course of the novel, and uh, the last one being considerably younger than she was, something that, of course, then was regarded as unusual and even slightly shocking. So I loved The Winthrop Woman. I think it's a wonderful way of telling history. Anya Seaton did fabulous research. She sticks to the facts, but she also tells us a really, really good story. Many of Anya Seaton's novels have been reissued recently with forwards by the historical novelist Philippa Gregory. Philippa Gregory has commented, to read Seaton is to enter into another time with such conviction that it seems as real as the present. So if you enjoy good history in the form of a novel, let me recommend Anya Seaton to you. And she wrote many other books, but today I have shared with you my two favorites, Catherine and the Winthrop Woman.